The lateral geniculate nucleus is a relay center in the thalamus from the visual pathway. It receives a major sensory input from the retina. The LGN is the main central connection for the optic nerve to the occipital lobe. In humans, each LGN has six layers of neurons alternating with optic fibers. The LGN is small, ovoid, ventral projection at the termination of optic tract on each side of the brain. The LGN and the medial geniculate nucleus which deals with auditory information are both thalamic nuclei and so are present in both hemispheres. The LGN receives information directly from the ascending retinal ganglion cells via the optic tract and from the reticular activating system. Neurons of the LGN send their axons through the optic radiation, a direct pathway to the primary visual cortex. In addition, the LGN receives many strong feedback connections from the primary visual cortex, in humans as well as other mammals. The two strongest pathways linking the eye to the brain are those projecting to the dorsal part of the LGN in the thalamus, and to the superior colliculus. Structure Both the left and right hemisphere of the brain have a lateral geniculate nucleus named after its resemblance to a bent knee. In humans as well as in many other primates, the LGN has layers of magnocellular cells and parvocellular cells that are interleaved with layers of coniocellular cells. In humans the LGN is normally described as having six distinctive layers. The inner two layers are magnocellular layers, while the outer four layers are parvocellular layers. An additional set of neurons, known as the coniocellular layers, are found ventral to each of the magnocellular and parvocellular layers. This layering is variable between primate species, and extra leafleting is variable within species. M. P. K. cells. Size relates to cell body, dendritic tree and receptive field. The magnocellular, parvocellular, and coniocellular layers of the LGN correspond with the similarly named types of retinal ganglion cells. Retinal P. ganglion cells send axons to a parvocellular layer. M. ganglion cells send axons to a magnocellular layer. And K. ganglion cells send axons to a coniocellular layer. Coniocellular cells are functionally and neurochemically distinct from M and P cells and provide a third channel to the visual cortex. They project their axons between the layers of the lateral geniculate nucleus where M and P cells project. The role in visual perception is presently unclear, however, the coniocellular system has been linked with the integration of somatosensory system proprioceptive information with visual perception, and it may also be involved in color perception. The parvo and magnocellular fibers were previously thought to dominate the ungulidomish conventral stream and dorsal stream, respectively. However, new evidence has accumulated Accumulated showing that the two streams appear to feed on a more even mixture of different types of nerve fibers. The other major retinocortical visual pathway is the tectopovenar pathway, routing primarily through the superior colliculus and thalamic pulvinar nucleus onto posterior parietal cortex and visual area mound, ipsilateral and contralateral layers. Layer 1, two large cells, called magnocellular pathways. Input from Y ganglion cells. Very rapid conduction, color blind system. Layer 3 to 6 parvocellular. Input from X ganglion cells. Color vision, moderate velocity. Dot. Both the LGN in the right hemisphere and the LGN in the left hemisphere receive input from each eye. However, each LGN only receives information from one half of the visual field. This occurs due to axons of the ganglion cells from the inner halves of the retina decassating through the optic chiasma. The axons of the ganglion cells from the outer half of the retina remain on the same side of the brain. Therefore, the right hemisphere receives visual information from the left visual field. 
and the left hemisphere receives visual information from the right visual field. Within one LGN, the visual information is divided among the various layers as follows. The eye on the same side sends information to layers 2, 3 and 5. The eye on the opposite side sends information to layers 1, 4 and 6. This description applies to the LGN of many primates but not all. The sequence of layers receiving information from the ipsilateral and contralateral eyes is different in the tarsia. Some neuroscientists suggested that this apparent difference distinguishes tarsiers from all other primates, reinforcing the view that they arose in an early, independent line of primate evolution. In visual perception, the right eye gets information from the right side of the world, as well as the left side of the world. You can confirm this by covering your left eye. The right eye still sees to your left and right, although on the left side your field of view may be partially blocked by your nose. In the LGN, the corresponding information from the right and left eyes is stacked, so that a toothpick driven through the club sandwich of layers 1 through 6, would hit the same point in visual space 6 different times. LGN Inputs The LGN receives input from the retina. In some species, such as rodents, the principal neurons in the LGN receive strong inputs from the retina. However, the retina only accounts for a small percentage of LGN input in these cases. As much as 95% of input in the LGN comes from the visual cortex, superior colliculus, pretectum, thalamic reticular and nuclei, and local LGN interneurons. Regions in the brainstem that are not involved in visual perception also project to the LGN, such as the mesencephalic reticular particular formation, dorsal raphe nucleus periacutal gray matter, and the locus coeruleus. The LGN also receives some inputs from the optic tectum. These non-retinal inputs can be excitatory, inhibitory, or modulatory. LGN output. Information leaving the LGN travels out on the optic radiations, which form part of the retrolenticular portion of the internal capsule. The axons that leave the LGN go to V1 visual cortex. Both the magnocellular layers 1 to 2 and the parvocellular layers 3 to 6 send their axons to layer 4 in V1. Within layer 4 of V1, layer 4C beta receives parvocellular input, and layer 4C alpha receives magnocellular input. However, the coniocellular layers, intercalated between LGN layers 1 to 6, send their axons primarily to the cytochrome oxidase rich blobs of layers 2 and 3 in V1. Axons from layer 6 of visual cortex send information back to the LGN. Studies involving blindsight have suggested that projections from the LGN not only travel to the primary visual cortex but also to higher cortical areas V2 and V3. Patients with blind sight are phenomenally blind in certain areas of the visual field corresponding to a contralateral lesion in primary visual cortex. However, these patients are able to perform certain motor tasks accurately in the blind field, such as grasping. This suggests that neurons travel from the LGN to both the primary visual cortex and higher cortex regions. Function in visual perception. The functions of the LGN are multiple. Its unique folding contributes to its utility by performing a range of anatomical calculations without requiring mathematical computations. These include both temporal correlations, decorrelations as well as spatial correlations. The resulting outputs include time correlated and spatially correlated signals resulting from summing the signals received from the left and right, semi-fields of view captured by each of the two eyes. These signals are correlated in order to achieve a three-dimensional representation of object space as well as obtain information for controlling the precision optical system of the visual modality.
The output serves several functions. A signal is provided to control the vergence of the two eyes so they converge at the principal plane of interest in object space. A signal is provided to control the focus of the eyes based on the calculated distance to the principal plane of interest. Computations are achieved to determine the position of every major element in object space relative to the principal plane. Through subsequent motion of the eyes, a larger stereoscopic mapping of the visual field is achieved. A tag is provided for each major element in the central 1.2 degree field of view of object space. The accumulated tags are attached to the features in the merged visual fields forwarded to area 17 of the cerebral cortex. A tag is also provided for each major element in the visual field describing the velocity of the major elements based on its change in coordinates. With time, the velocity tags are also used to determine the direction the organism is moving relative to object space. Dot. These position and velocity tags are extracted prior to the information reaching Area 17. They constitute the major source of information reported. In blindsight experiments where an individual reports motion in a portion of the visual field associated with one hemisphere of Area 17 that has been damaged by laceration, stroke, etc., the output signals from the LGN determine the spatial dimensions of the stereoscopic and monoscopic portions of the heropter of the visual system. It has been shown that while the retina accomplishes spatial decorrelation through centers around inhibition, the LGN accomplishes temporal decorrelation. This spatial temporal decorrelation makes for much more efficient coding. However, there is almost certainly much more going on, like other areas of the thalamus, particularly other relay nuclei. The LGN likely helps the visual system focus its attention on the most important information. That is, if you hear a sound slightly to your left, the auditory system likely tells the visual system through the LGN via its surrounding perireticular nucleus to direct visual attention to that part of space. The LGN is also a station that refines certain receptive fields. Experiments using fMRI in humans reported in 2010 that both spatial attention and Sakadichi movements can modulate activity in the LGN. Axiomatically determined functional models of LGN cells have been determined by Lindeberg in terms of Laplacian of Gaussian kernels over the spatial domain in combination with temporal derivatives of either non-causal or time-causal scale space kernels over the temporal domain. It has been shown that this theory both leads to predictions about receptive fields with good qualitative agreement with the biological receptive field measurements performed by DeAngelis A. Allen guarantees good theoretical properties of the mathematical receptive field model, including covariance and invariance properties under natural image transformations. Specifically according to this theory, non-lagged LGN cells correspond to first-order temporal derivatives whereas lagged LGN cells correspond to second-order temporal derivatives. Rodents In rodents, the lateral geniculate nucleus contains the dorsal lateral geniculate nucleus, the ventral lateral geniculate nucleus, and the region in between called the intergeniculate leaflet. These are distinct subcortical nuclei with differences in function. DLGN the dorsolateral geniculate nucleus is the main division of the lateral geniculate body. The majority of input to the DLGN comes from the retina. It is laminated and shows retinotopic organization. VLGN, the ventrolateral geniculate nucleus has been found to be relatively large in several species such as lizards, rodents, cows, cats, and primates. An initial cytoarchitectural scheme, which has been confirmed in several studies, suggests that the VLGN is divided into two parts. The external and internal divisions are separate 
separated by a group of fine fibers and a zone of thinly dispersed neurons. Additionally, several studies have suggested further subdivisions of the VLGN in other species. For example, studies indicate that the cytoarchitecture of the VLGN in the cat differs from rodents, although five subdivisions of the VLGN in the cat have been identified by some. The scheme that divides the VLGN into three regions has been more widely accepted. IGL the intergenoculate leaflet is a relatively small area found dorsal to the VLGN. Earlier studies had referred to the IGL as the internal dorsal division of the VLGN. Several studies have described homologous regions in several species, including humans. The VLGN and IGL appear to be closely related based on similarities in neurochemicals, inputs and outputs, and physiological properties. The VLGN and IGL have been reported to share many neurochemicals that are found concentrated in the cells, including neuropeptide Y, GABA, encephalin, and nitric oxide synthase. The neurochemicals serotonin, acetylcholine, histamine, dopamine, and noradrenaline have been found in the fibers of these nuclei. Both of the LGN and IGL receive input from the retina, locus coeolus, and raphe. Other connections that have been found to be reciprocal include the superior colliculus, pretectum, and hypothalamus, as well as other thalamic nuclei. Physiological and behavioral studies have shown spectral sensitive and motion sensitive responses that vary with species. The VLGN and IGL seem to play an important role in mediating phases of the circadian rhythms that are not involved with light, as well as phase shifts that are light-dependent.